Chapter 1 Prologue As soon as I reached the venue, Chad met me in the hallway. Finally. Come on, Elizabeth didn't come upstairs yet. Now let's go and get ready. You're already late. Sorry, got stuck in traffic. Liar. You left the bar late. I didn't have any choice. I had to serve that old rich regular customer until he left. I couldn't complain though. He gave generous tips. No worries. Now get your ass ready on time. And mind it, you have to shine like a star tonight. I want everyone's eyes just on you out there. You know, especially those hot naughty businessmen? His pierced eyebrows wiggled at me, ushering me in the makeup room. I nodded. Oh yeah, I'm so ready to steal the show. Except the businessman part. Calm down, Cassie. Overexcitement always landed you in trouble. At the sound of practiced laughter and chatters, I glanced around the huge makeup room. All the girls who were selected for the show were busy with their dresses and looks. Some were already working on their makeup, while some still checked out the gowns they were about to don. All of them looked like the typical classy, nicely groomed models. Looking down, I glanced at the heels in my hands, instead of my feet. The plain t-shirt and faded jeans. Not to forget the messy bun on the top of my head. Well, in my defense, I was late and didn't have time to work on my appearance. And I couldn't run after those taxis with those heels on. Are you kidding me? Is she the Barbie doll you were talking about, Chad? A girl snorted from beside the rack of gowns. I recognized her. Charlotte. A rising face in the industry and Elizabeth's second cousin. I kept a straight face as her blue eyes swept over me. Her too sharp nose scrunched. Yes, she is the one. Now why don't you shut up and do your own work? Rolling his eyes, he took me to the gowns. Working in this industry for years as a photographer and also as a hairstylist as his part-time job, more like a hobby, he was acquainted with some well-known faces. And Elizabeth just happened to be his good friend from college. I was just lucky that even though he was four years older than me, we hit it off from the first day he came to the bar I worked at. Look, aren't they just gorgeous? He showed me the dresses. The sparkle in his brown eyes told me he would love to try some. But unfortunately couldn't. My own mouth parted at the view. Roaming my hand over one of them, I felt the material. It felt smooth against my palm. Some were sparkling with stones that looked like tiny diamonds, where some were adorned with colorful mesh. They were extraordinary. No doubt Elizabeth was going to be famous after tonight. Of course, she will. She is gifted, truly. If she wasn't with that hot temper, she would be the favorite person of mine, Chad said. I blinked. I said that out loud? Thank God, she has a temper. Because I want that favorite spot exclusively in your life forever. At my wink, he chortled. Yeah. Though in my opinion, it would be really easy for her to grab some investors with loaded pockets. But she is focusing on grabbing De Silvano's eye. And that, let me tell you, isn't an easy thing to do, the girl from earlier commented. Next to impossible. Elizabeth is good, but he only wants the best. Only a couple of the top designers in the country got the luck to work with him. The other chick beside Charlotte shook her head, twirling her red strand. She got lucky that her father is a family friend of his, and after requesting him for months, he agreed to attend the event tonight. But she shouldn't hold high hopes. I noticed the sparkle in Charlotte's eyes at the mention of this Silvano guy. But trust me, even if he doesn't hire her as one of his designers, his mere presence in the show would bring her huge limelight. After all, he is the shark of this industry, his companies are ruling the textile world. Only his name is enough to make one successful, Charlotte said, her tone sultry. Whoever this guy was, she was definitely after him. I nudged Chad. Who is this shark guy? He let out a sigh. A man who can either make one's life or destroy it completely. Depends on people's luck and his mood. I frowned. Mood? He waved me off. 
Nothing. Let's not talk about that hot devil from hell. You better stay away from him seeing the way you attract trouble wherever you go. Now here is your dress, you're going to wear it tonight. A person who ruins someone's life on the basis of his moods? What kind of psychopath was he? Blinking, I looked at the gown Chad handed me over. A sleeveless blue mermaid gown. I gasped. It's beautiful, Chad. I especially requested Elizabeth to select this one for you. Your honey blonde hair would look gorgeous with this dress. Just like Cinderella. My stomach did flip-flops at the mere thought of doing the ramp walk wearing this gown. Now go and get changed into it. I will do your hair today. Nodding, as I was about to turn around with the heavy gown in my hand, it was suddenly snatched away from me. Frowning, I turned to the person. Blue eyes held my gaze. Excuse me? Charlotte, what are you doing? asked Chad. A nonchalant look laced on her features. I think this one would look better on me than her. So I'm taking this. But you were already given a gown. This is not for you. Her gaze sent a look of disgust over my body again. Unfortunately, our height and size are almost the same. But of course, you hold no chance before me in the looks category, so it doesn't matter. I like it more than the one they selected for me. So this is mine. You can choose something else. My fists clenched. Was this bitch insulting me? Cassandra Brooks? I might not be rich like her. But I didn't tolerate disrespect and ignorance. Listen you. You are not here to do shopping, that you will get to take whatever the hell you want. We are all here to work. So act professionally and wear what you were given. Give me my gown back. My tone came out as a snap. All the eyes in the room were glued on us. Charlotte, you can't do this. Elizabeth wouldn't be happy. Shopping or not, I take what I like. And I liked this one, so it's mine now. Sorry, you aren't getting it back, honey. She cut Chad off. I said give me that gown this instant or else. As I went to advance her, with my hands itching to scratch her plastic-filled face off, Chad pulled me back. Cassie, no. Don't. What's happening here? A sharp voice took everyone's attention to the door. With shoulder-length brown hair and a petite body, Elizabeth had a crease between her perfectly arched brows. Uh, Liz. Charlotte started. Her tone came out sweet like honey. Nothing, I chose a dress for myself and she. A bitch is showing her bitchiness, I hissed out, glaring holes at her. While Elizabeth, along with everyone else gaped at me, Chad's grip tightened on my arm. Watch your mouth, Cassie. Do you want to get yourself in trouble tonight? Chad warned in my ear, before turning to Elizabeth. Let me explain. Charlotte took Cassie's dress, because she liked it more than the one she was given. More like snatched, I interrupted. Chad's scowl soon landed on me, and when my friend here asked Charlotte to return it, she started to utter mean words to her. Now you tell me, what kind of behavior is that? I was surprised how calm he was. I should really learn this trait from him. But I knew, I couldn't even if I wanted to. Letting out a sigh, Elizabeth rubbed her temple. Char, you know you can't just do that. You have to follow the rules. And you know me. I liked this dress. So if you want me to be a part of your show, then don't ruin my mood, Elizabeth. Charlotte crossed her arms over her chest. At her threat, her second cousin seemed to surrender. With slumped shoulders, she turned to Chad. I'm sorry, Chad. She isn't gonna listen. I can see their sizes are almost the same. Why don't you give your friend Char's gown? That one is also amazing. She didn't even look at me. As if I didn't exist in the room. With my enthusiasm dying, my temper was rising high. But I had to keep my lips sealed. I needed this show. I know. But the color of that one wouldn't go well with her amber eyes. Chad's lips pursed. Do you mind if I get something for her from your collection from last month? She nodded. 
Yes, of course. You can go and pick whichever you want. All right, thanks. Giving her assistant the key to her studio, she left to see the arrangements. Cassie, you wait here. Let me get a dress for you. And don't worry, you will have the best. I will make sure of it, he promised, turning around to follow the assistant. And stay out of trouble. I rolled my eyes at his warning. But at the same time, I was grateful that he was doing this much for me. When I looked back at Charlotte, she let out a scoff before walking away with my dream gown. Her minions trailed behind her. How I wished I could wring her neck. Calm down, Cassie. Take some deep breaths and focus on the show. Violation wouldn't take you anywhere. A sigh left me. I hoped tonight would go smoothly without any other drama. God, I knew you would look like a princess in this piece. It's bringing out the color of your eyes and hair so well, odd Chad, looking at me through the mirror. His expression reflected on my face as I roamed my hands on the dress. The shimmery red princess gown that flowed beautifully down my waist to my toes. The sparkling stones and heavy boutique work over my chest and on the flare made it look like a piece from heaven. It was a cold shoulder gown with a sweetheart neckline that showed the right amount of my cleavage. Chad left my hair down with light curls at the end. And the dark red lipstick and nude makeup completed my look. No one would be able to look away from you tonight, my doll. I grinned at him, before wrapping my arms around his neck. Thank you so much, Chad. You're truly the best. I don't know what I would do without you. Letting out a laugh, he patted my back. Okay now. Don't get emotional and don't cling. I want you to be picture perfect. Once he pulled away, the loud's music began outside. The claps and distance hubbub of people followed behind. The show has started. Now hurry up. Your second last. With my heart thumping wildly down my chest, I nodded and let him guide me to the backstage. Excitement rushed through my veins. But at the same time my hands and feet were cold out of nervousness, my first ramp walk in a place filled with famous people. I just hoped I wouldn't break my legs in those killer pencil heels. As soon as I reached the backstage, I found Charlotte. With a frown etched between her brows, she watched herself in a small mirror and cursed at her hairstylist for not curling her hair properly even though it looked perfect. I need to fix it. Hissing out, just as she turned, she stopped in her tracks. Her eyes widened as they fell on me. Soon, I could feel others' gazes on me as well. What? Want to take this one too? I raised a brow. Chad let out a snicker, as well as some other girls around us. Anger flashed across her orbs while I held my chin high, challenging her. Molding her features into a composed one, she then looked away and started to walk to head back to the makeup room. And as I thought to completely focus on the show, just when she was about to pass me, her shoulder bumped into mine with a force. A force that threw me off balance. But thankfully, I took the support of the wall, beside us. The pain in my left ankle, due to losing the balance made me press my lips tight. What the hell, Charlotte? Chad snapped, coming to my side. Before I could say anything to her, casting a smirk in my way, she walked away. I gritted my teeth, standing straight. Just let the night pass. I swear I would make her pay. Hey? You all right? I nodded at Chad, calming my breathing down. Elizabeth rushed on the spot. Are you guys ready? The ramp walk will start in a minute. At positive responses, she let out a stressed smile. All right. Just give your best. Remember tonight can make your entire career if you shine out there. There are hundreds of famous faces, billionaire investors who can also hire you as the face of their companies. And give me a break too. A chuckle. But soon seriousness took over her face. Especially Mr. De Silvano. He is going to be here any time now. You guys don't know how lucky you are that he is going to be here and watch you. I didn't know why, but a shiver ran down my spine as she uttered the word watch. From everyone's mouth, he seemed to be like a king of the city, 
and walking on the stage with him watching me sent unwanted nervous butterflies in my stomach. Chad said he ruined people's career on the basis of his mood. So what if he wouldn't like my ramp walk? What if? I shook my head. There would be fifteen more girls out there on the stage. He wouldn't even notice you. So don't think anything negative. Everything will be fine. All right, Samantha? You ready? asked Elizabeth. Nodding, Samantha, who would be first to go out, straightened her posture, kept a hand on her waist and then walked out on the stage. Loud applause rang across the place along with the loud music. And just like that, one after another went out and walked on the ramp with utmost confidence and poise. Soon, it was my turn to go. I gulped. My feet went cold. But I was ready to go. You ready, Cassie? I nodded. The butterflies in my tummy and the slight pain in my ankle wouldn't be able to hold me back. Tonight was my night. Go and steal the show. Chad exclaimed. With my heart racing, I held my head. As new music started, I revealed myself before the uncountable pairs of eyes. While the cheering audience stayed in shadow, the spotlight was focused on me. Come on, Cassie. Show your spark. Spreading a smile on my dark red lips, I let myself walk ahead. The huge round of applause and cheering just raised my confidence higher. Reaching the end of the ramp, I let myself twirl in the gorgeous gown. As the flashes of cameras fell on me, I felt I was on the top of the world. Suddenly I felt something burning my skin. A weird sensation. Every pair of eyes was on me, but still, I felt like I was being watched. Even though it didn't make any sense, roaming my eyes around the audience, I halted on a person. On the right side of the stage, in a secluded area, as if a VIP place, sat a man in the shadows. Some tall men stood straight beside him. I could feel his unmoving gaze on me. The way he sat, it looked as if the whole world belonged to him. While the crowd was clapping, the music blared, a shiver ran down my spine. Quickly removing my gaze, I turned around and walked back inside. And just the girl after me was done, I went out again as the models walked out one by one in a line, to do the ramp walk for one last time. I didn't dare to look in that man's direction. For some reason, the aura around him, even in the shadows, made me nervous. With the burning sensation still present there, I did my walk effortlessly. Reaching the end again, the girls parted into two lines. Some walked back to the entrance from the right side of the stage, some went from the left edge. And as the girl before me went to the left, I took the right. Each step I took was filled with confidence. No one could make me stop tonight. Not even a VIP creepy man. Suddenly, something happened in my left heel, as if something moved from its place. And the next thing I knew was I lost my balance, and with a shriek, I fell off the high stage. Gasps from the crowd rang in the ambience. One moment I was falling, and the next moment a pair of arms caught me in them. Strong ones. My face collided against a chest as hard as steel. With my heart in my throat, my fists instinctively clutched the material of his coat and a heady masculine, crisp, cologne hit my nostrils, surrounding my senses. The crowd suddenly went silent, though the music didn't stop. The show must go on. Slowly leaning away from the warmth, I looked up. My heart skipped as soon as my gaze met with a pair of icy blue eyes. Due to the shadow, I couldn't make out his whole features. From the flashing lights on the stage, I could only see his left profile. Sharp angular jaw, strong nose, and thick arched brows followed by that pair of icy blue eyes. They were so cold yet so intense that for a moment, I forgot to breathe. With his rough hands holding me firmly against his chest, the way those dark gaze roamed my features slowly and steadily, I gulped. But for some reason, I couldn't tear my eyes off them either. Cassie? At Chad's voice, I blinked and turned away from those hypnotizing eyes. Oddly, his grip on me tightened, as if not liking the move. God! Are you all right? Chad asked, rushing to the VIP area. Wiggling in that man's arms, I stood on my feet and instantly made some distance from him. 
was he gonna hold me in his arms forever? Because it seemed like he wasn't in a mood to put me down. Yeah, I'm fine, he let out a sigh of relief. What happened? How did you fall? I shrugged, ignoring the way my skin burned under a certain person's stare. His eyes still watched me like a creep, without moving away. My heart thumped down my chest. Blood rushed to my cheeks for some weird reasons. My left heel broke, I answered. But how, he asked. Anyways, let's go inside and talk. Wrapping his arms around my shoulders, he then turned to that man. Thank you so much for saving my girl, Mr. De Silvano. And I'm sorry for what happened. Hope you didn't mind, my eyes widened. De Silvano? My eyes snapped to him. And as expected, they were set on me. No wonder he was in the VIP zone. Before Chad could say anything else, Elizabeth rushed to the spot. And using the chance, Chad threw a polite nod towards Mr. De Silvano grabbed my hand and guided me away from him. Away from his unmoving gaze. Licking my lips, I let Chad drag me out of there. I didn't dare to look back. Chapter 2 Miracles I was pushed back some steps with the force it burst open. Three men in rugged clothes and skin filled with tattoos barged in. What the hell? I gasped at their sudden intrusion. I should have seen who it was through the peephole, before opening the door. Why are you barging into my house? Who the hell are you? Don't remember me, Chica? I thought we had a good talk over the phone last Monday, the man in the middle said. The smell of alcohol entered my nostrils. My brows frowned. What are you? Then the conversation hit my memory lane. My fists clenched. You remembered now? With a raised brow, he raked his bloodshot eyes over my body. I told you to send me my money by Friday. And it's Saturday now. Where is the money? His tone turned harder with each word. And if you don't remember, let me rephrase it again. I won't give you a single penny. Now get out of my apartment. I held his gaze, pointing towards the door. Of course, you will. Stepping forward, he cupped my jaw with his fingers digging into my flesh. A wince left my lips. That bitch stole fucking $25,000 from my house. And now you are gonna pay for that. Then go and get her. Because I'm not paying you anything. I hissed, trying to get out of his grip. But damn, he had a good grip even when drunk. Don't you think I have tried? But I can't find her anywhere. He growled on my face, spitting out in the process. Bile rose up my throat. You're her daughter. So now you will pay me my money back instead of her. Otherwise, I'll have to drag you to my bar and make you serve me. You will pay me back by. A smirk tugged up his dark lips. Pleasuring my clients. And trust me, I would be really happy to do that. The men with him laughed. One of them touched the gun tucked in his pocket with his gaze set on me, as if threatening me. Something fell in my stomach. They were dangerous, and that man's words were disturbing. I would have loved to kick their dicks and throw them out of my house at that moment, but I couldn't be stupid. I looked at the man whom my fucking mother robbed. I don't have that much money. He snorted. I'm no fool. I know your career is going downhill nowadays after you sued that director. But that doesn't mean your bank balance is also zero. Not famous, but you were doing quite well in the past few years. Were. The word was like a slap to my face. Bitter, but it was the truth. So don't feed me that shit and give me my money. You have time till next Friday. Otherwise, I do what I say. I pushed his hand away, and he let me do it. Giving one last look over my figure once again, with his threat ringing in my head, he left with his men. Pinching the bridge of my nose, I let out a sigh. Even though I didn't let the emotion show on my face, fear and anxiety nodded in my stomach. My jaw clenched. Fear. I hated this feeling. I hated being helpless. I hated being too. It's been years since anything like this happened. 
The last time any of her debtors came knocking on my door and threatened me was years ago. I left Teresa, my so-called mother, when I was 15. My grandma from dad's side let me stay with her for a year until she died. But even if I left her, her deeds never left me. Her debtors and exes, that's what I have been doing since I started to earn. My life had become a living hell with their threats. I couldn't sleep at night due to their terror. She was good at running away whenever she knew she had to pay for her deeds. Her addiction to alcohol and drugs ruined my life as well as hers. But all of it suddenly stopped after my 18th birthday. The day after that fashion show five years ago was my 18th birthday. I didn't know how, but this miracle happened. I thought she finally got back to her senses and fixed all the problems. But clearly, she didn't. And now I will have to pay for her. I was concerned when this man all of a sudden called me the other night. Listening to his slurred threats, I decided to ignore it as it's been years since something like this happened. But he showed up on my doorsteps today. It felt like I was back to five years ago. Yes, I had some money saved from my modeling and ad shows. But after buying this little apartment for me, I didn't have much in my bank account. If I gave it to him, I wouldn't have anything left for my expenses, because I didn't have any shows in my hands now. I was jobless. Since I messed with that fucking director. The blaring of my phone from the kitchen took my attention. Closing the door, I walked in the kitchen. Beth. Sorry, Beth. I can't come over today. Gotta handle something. What? But why? I told you he would be here today, and we will have lunch together. You haven't looked him in the eye for some months now. Her exasperated sigh resounded through the phone. I didn't want to look her boyfriend in the eye even today, that man didn't have a backbone to stand up for her. It's been months since his conservative mother totally denied their relationship, but that man couldn't do anything about it. She couldn't accept a girl with his son who wasn't a Catholic. He couldn't convince his mother because he was a coward and nor did he tell her off. He loved his mother. But at the same time, he didn't want to let go of Beth too, only hurting her in the process by his mother's insults on a daily basis. Seriously. If I was in her situation, I would just flip off such conservative family and run away. You have to come. I need to go to the court in an hour, Beth. Today was the final judgment for that bastard. Oh. You didn't tell me about that. Her tone was accusing. I got to know about it last night myself, I answered, taking a sip on the coffee that was cold now. Before I could drink it, those drunk men came up. You need me to come with you? I can cancel the lunch if you want, she offered, her tone soft. A dry smile tugged on my lips. It's okay, Beth. Enjoy your lunch with Mason. I can go there myself. It won't take long. I have been taking care of the shit life has thrown at me all my life. So I could do it today too. You sure? I am. Don't worry. All right, I need to get ready. I don't want to get late. You know the traffic. My gaze snapped down at the soft ball of fur that rubbed against my leg. All right, let me know what happens. Love you. Love you too. Putting the phone down, I picked up the brown cat in my arms. Peeking at me with its green eyes, it meowed at me. All the anxieties were pushed towards the back of my head for a moment as a chuckle left me. You're hungry, Romeo? He purred, making my kiss its head. All right, Romeo. Let's get your tummy full. What do you want to eat for lunch? Chicken? He didn't make a sound, only licked his paw. So chicken it is. Once I gave him his lunch, I quickly got ready before messaging my lawyer that I was on my way. He had already sent three messages to make sure I was there on time. Well, I had some bad records of arriving places late. Grabbing my purse, I then got out of the house. Time to see that bastard rotting behind the bars. Congratulations, Mississippi Brooks. You have won the battle. Eugene, my lawyer whom I hired for my case against Todd Samuelson. 
Thank you. It all happened because of you. If you hadn't come forward by yourself to help me out with this case, I wouldn't be able to send that man behind the bars, I said, shaking his hand. Todd, one of the famous directors in the film industry who tried to throw himself on me when I visited him in his vanity to discuss the short film he offered me. It would be my debut in the movies. And then he pulled that stunt. That bastard. The punches I gave him in return weren't enough, I wanted him to see him rotting in jail. A shaky breath left me. My fists clenched around my purse as I tried to put the I don't care look on my face. I was lucky that there were people outside the vanity, so he couldn't do any damage to my already damaged soul. Eugene cleared his throat, letting out an awkward laugh. Uh, I saw the news on the TV how Todd Samuelson did wrong to you. And him being the younger brother of the mayor of the city, no one was ready to help you. I forced a smile on even with the turmoil inside me. Trust me, you literally came into my life like an angel when there was no one ready to help me and go against the mayor. I was truly grateful that he helped me put that man behind the bars. Though it took two months for him to do that as the mayor tried his best to save his brother. As a powerful politician of Los Angeles, he had some connections here and there. But in the end, miraculously, Eugene managed to make Todd accept his crime and make the mayor back off. How did he do it? I didn't know, he didn't tell me anything. Just like I didn't know why he, a well-known lawyer of the country, came forward to help me on his own just after a week the incident happened. When no lawyer was ready to fight my case. He said he wanted to make Todd Samuelson pay for what he did. But it wasn't enough to make me believe his words. There was definitely something more there. But I didn't ask much as I needed him to be on my side. As his phone vibrated in his hand, he glanced down at the screen before looking up at me. Mississippi Brooks. I have to leave now, but I will see you soon. We will have to do some paperwork. Sure. Let me know when I will have to be present at your command. I winked, trying to make the conversation lighter. His eyes widened slightly. Glancing around swiftly, he cleared his throat again before nodding his head and walking away. A crease formed between my brows. What was that? It's not over yet, you know? A voice spoke from behind me. Turning around, I faced the very mayor of L.A. Robert Samuelson. In his early fifties, he stood before me with his towering height and no hair on the head, and beside him stood Todd, his brother. Something churned in my stomach as soon as my eyes met his dark brown ones. They watched me with a hatred that was quite similar to his elder brother. The memories from that day made my jaw clench. Bile rose up my throat. Calm down, Cassie. It is over now. He will be rotting behind the bars for years. Holding my chin high, I said, it's over whether you accept it or not. My eyes went back to Todd. Didn't I tell you? You will pay for what you did? Congratulations on your defeat, bastard. My tone was as poised as a model should have been. But my words weren't. Fury flashed through his features. The bruises that were on his face and body last month were gone now. But his broken arm was still in the clutcher. Someone really broke it badly. He was admitted to the hospital some hours after he tried to force himself on me. He was so badly beaten that people couldn't recognize his face due to all the blood. No one knew who did it. But people assumed it could be someone with whom he messed up really badly. But whoever it was, I was grateful to him for doing it. It was a soothe to my burning rage and hatred. Even though his tensed shoulders and gritting teeth told me he wanted to grab my throat, oddly enough, he didn't utter a word. And it bothered me. He wasn't a man to stay quiet. Don't be so happy, Mississippi Brooks. It's just a case you won. Trust me, I don't forget faces who mess with my family. With your drowning career, you should take steps carefully. Threat was etched deep in the mayor's words. Wow. Another one who was after my life now. I smiled, a sweet one. Why don't you just cool down and focus on your own career, Robert? I heard your position is at risk now. 
because your brother has ruined your reputation along with his. So instead of threatening me, focus on how to save yourself from drowning now. His lips pressed. A muscle of his jaw ticked. I knew crossing a powerful politician's path wasn't a good idea. But I already did that when I sued his brother. So there was no backing out now. You. Before he could utter another word, I threw one last glare at Todd and walked out of the room. As soon as I was out in the open air, I took a deep breath. This is over now. Time to carry on with my life like the old Cassandra Brooks. Positive and carefree. Because I didn't care about the past. About my sinking career. And about the threat from Teresa's debtors. Walking to my car, I got in and drove away. Ignoring the blaring of my phone, I turned to another street. My eyes burned, but I blinked the tears away. My throat clogged up, making me gulp. I took a deep breath. I was okay. I didn't give a fuck about anything, definitely to the incident that day. But as the memories of that day in the vanity flashed over my eyes, a tear fell. The recollection of his touch and gaze made me feel disgusted. My grip tightened on the steering wheel. I had to control my emotions. It made people weak. And I didn't want to be weak. I was strong. I wasn't eleven years old anymore. As another fucking tear rolled down, I sped up the car. No matter how much I tried to forget about it, it somehow crawled back in my mind. It made me weak when I was out of people's sight. But it is over now. I should move on. I have to. One problem was tackled. Now it was time to think about those men from this morning and my career. No matter how much I didn't want to care, I had to. I needed to call Chad. Wiping my tears furiously as if they were acid to my cheeks, just as I looked down to grab my phone, a forceful jerk sent me backwards along with the loud noise before my head collided against the window glass. Breath knocked out of my lungs. Black dots appeared in my vision as everything went silent for some moments. Distant chaos and the smell of smoke reached my senses. But other than blinking in the haziness, I couldn't move an inch. I felt numb. Some knocks landed on the side of my window but it sounded more like someone smashing their fists against the glass. Pain soon shot throughout my skull as I tried to move. I let out a whimper. As I thought I would black out locked in the car, the door suddenly burst open. Someone unlocked my seatbelt and cupped my cheeks with rough hands. A heady cologne reached my nostrils. My name was being called, but it sounded distant and foreign. I couldn't focus on the voice. Even trying my best, I couldn't open my eyelids properly. As the seconds passed, they threatened to shut down. An arm snaked around my waist before getting me out of the car. This time, the scent was closer, as if engulfing me in it. For all I knew I was being carried. Cassandra. Don't, shoo, you're EY, damn it. That distant voice ordered. Stay with me. I could feel myself falling falling in the darkest pit of somewhere. But I wanted to see who saved me. The person who knew my name, forcing myself, I lifted my gaze up. And the only thing I saw before darkness totally consumed me was. Chapter 3 Icy Blue Eyes The first thing I heard after getting my senses back was the beeping of some machine. Blinking against the bright light, I opened my eyes. A silent groan left my lips at the pain that shot through my head as soon as I tried to move. White walls. Blue curtains. A doctor stood at the corner of the room in her white uniform, explaining something to a nurse. Hospital? Why the hell I was in a hospital? The pain in my head. Then memories from earlier the day rushed in. The court, Todd Samuelson, and then the, accident. Frantically, I tried to feel every inch of my body, other than my head, thankfully everything seemed all right. Cassie. Oh thank God. I was getting crazy thinking why you aren't up yet. Beth's voice snatched my eyes to the door. With a cup of coffee in her hand, she rushed in. Only then the doctor noticed that I got my consciousness back. How are you feeling now, Mississippi Brooks? 
Beth sat on the chair beside the bed. My head is throbbing, I croaked out. You have hit your head on the car window pretty hard. But don't worry. Luckily, there are no internal injuries, but the pain will take a day or two to go away because you have a slight swelling on your head. I hope I don't look like a cartoon with a hump on her head, I mumbled. She let out a chuckle. No, Mississippi Brooks. You look fine. The swell isn't visible. Anyways, I'm giving you a painkiller and some meds. They will help you with the pain. And take rest. You need it. As the doctor and the nurse left the room, I turned to Beth. Did I ruin your lunch date? Her hazel eyes rolled. No, you didn't. We were just watching a movie when I got a call about your accident. A sigh left her. Thank God, Mr. De Silvano was there by a sheer coincidence and saw you. He brought you to the hospital immediately. My heart skipped as at the mention of him. That pair of intense icy blue eyes. I couldn't see his face, but I knew whom those eyes belonged to. Those eyes were not something to forget. Duncan De Silvano. The hot mysterious Italian billionaire. The man who often knocked on my dreams for the past few months. Years to say, the man who saved me from falling from the stage five years ago. Whose unmoving gaze on that night was engraved on my mind. My heartbeat started to race without any reason. Stupid heart. Don't forget he was the same man who had ignored you like a plague on every Valencian party you met. My lips pressed tight. You should thank him, you know? He only left when I arrived and the doctor said that you were fine. That's so kind of him. Beth's voice pulled me back from my wandering thoughts. He stayed here for me for that long when he barely knew me other than his close friend's family friend? I thought he hated me. Well, I hated him too. Except his eyes. And sinful looks. And. Okay, stop it. Yeah, I will if he will talk to me. She frowned. What do you mean? Nothing. Getting up, even with the throbbing in my head, I grabbed the coffee she brought. I hate it when you don't share things with us. She referred to my other best friend. Emerald Hutton, now a happy Valencian. And that's my coffee. I tell you when it's important, and it's not, I said, taking a sip. It immediately warmed my senses. You should lie down. You had an accident. I just hit my head. Not injured or dead. Her gaze narrowed at me. You're cranky today. Since this morning. What's up? I like my fun Cassie, you know? That brought a smile to my lips. Nothing. I was just stressed over the case. Even if she and M were the only people I could call my own, as my family, sharing my personal problems with them or anyone else never have been my thing. I wanted to, but I couldn't, because letting people in meant letting them peek into my past. And that was the last thing I wanted. The door opened again, interrupting us. Mason walked in with an awkward smile. Adjusting his glasses, he cleared his throat. Hey, Cassandra. How are you? I rolled my eyes, getting a slap on my arm from Beth. Be nice. I don't like him. My gaze fixed on Mason, who shifted on his legs. Cassie. She glared. When I didn't apologize, an exasperated sigh left her. He has changed, Cassie. He clearly told his mom that he wants to be with me, whether she likes it or not. And he is going to move in with me next month. I raised my brows. So he finally got some balls? You aren't gonna chicken out before your mom, will you? His shake of head was immediate. Walking closer, he put a hand on Beth's shoulder. I love her. Yes, it took me some time to stand up for our relationship. But I realized that I can't stay without her. So I'm not letting her go whether my mom likes it or not. You can trust me with your best friend, Cassandra. At the certainty in his voice, blush coated Beth's cheeks, happiness sparkled in her hazel orbs. A smile tugged on my lips. 
she has been through a lot in these past few months. As long as you don't hurt her, you're safe from my hands, I shrugged. And you can call me Cassie from now on. Welcome to the family. A relieved grin broke out on his boyish features. Thank you. So you won't ditch any lunches or dinners if I'm attending from now on? I laughed, wincing at the same time from the pain. What about hitting the club tonight? A gasp came from Beth. Absolutely not, you're directly coming to my place and taking a rest as long as your head doesn't get better. I waved her off. I will take some painkillers. I will be fine. I put Todd behind the bars today, so I need some alcohol in my system to celebrate. I needed to get wild to forget about everything. The break was needed. But. You can come with me if you want. But I'm going, and that's final. Her shoulders slumped. I wish Em was here. She could put some sense into you. She is six months pregnant now and currently in New York with her husband, Achilles Valencian, enjoying a short vacation. It's good that you didn't inform her. Now get me out of this hospital. Then something clicked in my head. The room I was staying in looked like it was made for some VIP. That Italian brought me to an expensive hospital, didn't he? God. The bill is going to empty my bank account. I cursed under my breath. Of course, that multi-billionaire wouldn't go to a cheaper one. It would be against his prestige. Oh, don't worry about it. Mr. De Silvano already sorted it out. You don't need to pay anything, chirped Beth. I gaped. He paid the bills for me, but why? That man was confusing me. It seemed like it was time to meet him. Cassandra Brooks didn't keep anyone's favor. My my, is that Mr. Green I'm seeing here? The bartender in all black and lean body turned to me. Pale green eyes widened as soon as they landed on me. Cassie! What a pleasant surprise! When did you arrive? I was a regular visitor of the club he used to work at. I needed to get wild every other day to keep myself sane, though it was fun. Just now. When did you join this one? My gaze roamed around the place, managed a lavish one this time. Yeah, I guess I got lucky. Just joined last week. Chuckling, he glanced over my shoulder and raised his brows. I turned to Beth and her very uncomfortable boyfriend. Belonging from a conservative family, girls with barely dressed, intimate dancing between some couples and not mentionable doings at some corners put a look of constipation on his face. But he didn't complain. This is Beth, my best friend. And that's Mason, her boyfriend. And guys, this is Pete. Hello, guys. Nice to meet you. He greeted them with a polite smile. So? What can I get for you people? My regular. He nodded. Dirty martini it is. Same for me, said Beth, glancing at Mason. And just a glass of orange juice for him please. Nodding, Pete went to make our drinks. After some glasses of dirty martini, much to Beth's dismay, I ordered another one. It was reaching to my head and I liked it. A tall bulky man suddenly appeared beside me his shoulders touching mine. A smirk was next to come. What's up, babe? Bloodshot eyes filled with lust roamed over me. Well, the tiny dazzling black dress that ended right on my mid-thigh did grab a lot of attention around me. Wanna dance? Irritation crawled up my skin. Men. But instead of kicking his ass, I planted a sweet smile on my blood-red lips. My favorite color. His extremely strong perfume made me internally cringe. Sure, why not? But I'm a messy dancer, you don't mind, right? I blinked twice, my voice dripped with seduction. His eyes lit up. Of course, I don't mind as long as I get to dance with a beauty like you. I was never insecure with my features, with natural strawberry blonde hair, which I dyed into honey amber eyes, and the right amount of curves in the right places, many thought I was a born model. Compliments were a regular thing. But honestly, I didn't get flutters in my tummy or blush when someone called me beautiful. 
because I hated it when someone called me that. My thoughts got a break when that man gave me his hand. Let's go. Beth grabbed on my elbow. She shook her head, warning me. But I just winked at her before walking away with that man. Once reaching the dancing crowd, we started to shake our bodies with the beat even though my head pulsed. Loud music, flashing lights, drinks, and dance. My temporary escape from reality. And of course, hurting some men's ego and ruining their expectations, especially a man like this one, it felt good. Coming closer, he put his hands on my hips. You have got some good moves, babe. You think so? I screamed over the music. Nodding, as his hand slowly traveled to my butt, my heel not so mistakenly stepped over his feet. Ow. Fuck, he let out a curse. Oh my. I'm so sorry, I told you I'm a messy dancer. Are you all right? He quickly recovered and pulled me closer. No worries, babe. You can kiss the pain away if you want though. I would have kissed him if he wasn't a dick and a low-grade pervert. Honestly, I didn't want to ruin my mood by kissing another new guy and not going anywhere. Because it never got past kissing and light touching. My body didn't allow me. Instead of feeling tingles and lust, the only thing I felt was, panic. I had a good amount of boyfriends. But no one could take my V-card yet. No one could make the feeling go away. No one attracted me enough to make me forget the world for some time. Forget myself. I shook my head, taking a deep breath. You're here to enjoy, remember, Cassie? So don't think about them. What say? Breath that reeked of alcohol entered my senses. Only then I realized how close he was to me. His lips hovered over mine. No. I didn't want to disappoint myself again. He came closer. And before I could say no to him, he was suddenly snatched away from me, and the next thing I knew was that pervert was groaning in pain with his hand covering his jaw. Before he could step away, he was held by his collar. That guy's eyes went as big as saucers as they stared at the enraged man before him. My heart skipped. Duncan de Silvano? My lips parted in surprise at the scene before me. With his hands tightly clutched around that drunkard's collar, his furious icy blue eyes cut him into pieces. He growled out something which I couldn't make out under the loud music. His sharp angular jaw clenched while his nostrils flared. He was furious. The crowd around us stopped moving. All eyes were on the powerful man in the middle of the dance floor who was set to tear someone's limbs from limbs. Dramatic, yes. But it seemed like it. I almost flinched as he raised his hand for the second time. But before he could break that man's jaw, another man appeared on the spot and stopped him. Duncan, stop. His shout reached my ears. That drunkard clearly recognized who de Silvano was as he profusely mumbled something. From the fear on his face and tense shoulders, I could tell he was apologizing. What's happening? Why is he so mad? The other man, who must be a friend, then stepped closer and said something to Duncan's ear while those furious eyes were still on that poor guy. But whatever that man said seemed to work as he closed his eyes and took a deep breath. His sharp jaw was still tight. Without my permission, my gaze traveled over him. Donning a black Armani suit, he looked as sinful as ever. With a tall frame and well-built broad shoulders, he stood over most of the people around us, radiating an aura that screamed danger. As soon as those intense, still flaming icy blue eyes opened, they snapped to me. My eyes widened. And as if my legs had their own mind, they turned around and started to walk away. Why? I didn't know. I just wanted to stay away from that lava. Beautiful lava. Wait, shouldn't I thank him for what he did? Not tonight. I wanted to be sober for that. The world around me seemed slightly blurred. Letting out a hiccup as I looked around for Beth, a big rough hand grabbed my wrist before starting to drag me away. What the? Words got stuck in my throat as soon as I saw the back of the man who dragged me behind him. Far away from the crowd. 
to a secluded place. Once we were away from people's eyesight, I was pressed against a cold wall. A gasp slipped through my lips. With his one of his hands holding my arm, firmly yet gently, the other was on the wall, right beside my head. The intoxicating masculine crisp cologne of his filled my senses, engulfing me into it. My skin tingled where his his skin touched mine. What are you doy? I thought you were told to get rest, then what are you doing here? Icy blue eyes were dark, flaming. His deep Italian accent was filled with rage. My heart did some weird flip-flops. Butterflies danced in my tummy. I am. I stuttered. Well, let's admit it. This man made me nervous, for some reason. Whenever he was around, my heart felt like it would have a cardiac arrest. And when those intense icy blue eyes would watch me, I seemed to forget where I was. I cleared my throat. No, Cassandra Brooks wasn't weak. No man could make her feel weak. I'm here to do what everyone else is doing here. To have fun. I finally managed to speak. And who are you to ask me that? Pressing me against the wall? A muscle of his jaw ticked. With his overwhelming eyes watching me closely, he reduced an inch of the distance between us. I gulped. His scent and close proximity was tempering with my nerves. Chapter 4 A Kiss? You're standing on my property. His head cocked to the side. So I can do whatever the hell I want to do. As well as ask you questions. Now tell me, Miss Brooks, what are you doing here? This lavish club was his? Why was I so surprised? He freaking ruled the city. Blinking away the blurriness before my sight, trying to stand straight on my feet, I raised my chin. My gaze clashed with his cold icy blue eyes who were piercing through me, as if, reading my soul. I told you, I came here to party, and do you go around and ask every person who comes to this place the reason behind their presence here? Hiccuping again, I frowned. The alcohol was reaching my head. But I was getting more intoxicated by this overwhelming man's presence. Those intense eyes roamed over every inch of my features. A dark unknown emotion flashed across them. I pressed myself more against the wall as he stepped into my breathing zone. My heart started racing. W what are you? This big mouth of yours, he whispered. His gaze fixed on my lips, as if in a daze. It's gonna get you a lot of poony. He stopped, a muscle of his sharp angular jaw ticked. Huh? What was he about to say? Taking a deep breath, he met my gaze again. Go home, Cassandra. You need rest. Did you forget what the doctor said to you? The way my name rolled out of his tongue. It sounded divine. His raspy voice mixed with that accent sent a shiver down my spine. This was the first time we talked for this long. Otherwise, he didn't even say a word while he once agreed to dance with me when I swallowed my pride and approached this mysterious man, that one time. And all he did was, just stare at me. It was like I was dancing there alone. Because he barely moved. Creep. This man confused me. Ignoring the weakness in my knees and the weird feeling in my tummy, I cleared my throat. T thank you for today. For saving me. I managed to stay calm, caged in between him and the wall. Because he didn't seem to be in a mood to move away anytime soon. You didn't need to pay the bills though. Anyways, I will pay you back soon. How? Deep Italian accent. Damn that accent. I frowned. What do you mean by how? Trailing down his calloused hand from my arm to my waist, he squeezed lightly. A gasp left my lips. Tiny sparks of electricity exploded in every pore of my body. His touch seemed to put my blood on fire. Because I don't need your money. I didn't do any favor that you want to pay off. His voice was hard. Whilst his features were cold, those eyes strangely turned smoldering. As his breath mingled with mine, I licked my lips. His gaze followed the action. And my hooded eyes didn't take long to search for his firm and desirable mouth. But I want to pay you back, I breathed out, not moving my gaze from his lips. 
His hold tightened on my waist, making something tug in my lower region. What was happening to me? I had never felt this way before. It must be the alcohol in my system. The sensation in my tummy worsened. How do you plan to pay me back if I'm not going to take it in cash, Cassandra? His warm breath fanned my cheek. His body almost pressed against mine. My breathing came out harsh. Heart thundered. Before I could think anything, words blurted out of my mouth. A kiss? I wanted those lips. His jaw clenched. Taking a sharp breath, he pressed his hard body against me completely. A whimper left me as his other hand wrapped around my hips. What did you say? he asked. His voice came out rough and deep. I bit my lip. This time, I held his gaze. They were dark, a darkness that was sucking me in. What about a kiss? Can I pay you back with my lips? I knew I would regret my words later. But at that moment, I wanted to feel those firm yet soft lips against mine. Let's admit it, I wanted to do it for so long, his stance went rigid. Letting out a foreign curse under his breath, he wrapped his arm around my waist before pulling me flush against him. I gasped. Leaning in, he let his lips hover over mine. The fragrance of his aftershave and the unique crisp male scent of his made me shiver. Lightheaded. I dare you to do that, Sandra. His lips moved just before my eyes. His tone challenged me. But the edge of his voice enchanted me at the same time. Sandra? Wait, was he daring me? I hiccuped again. My stomach rolled. Well, I love dares, especially when it was related to those sexy lips. Clutching his collar tightly in my fists, I leaned in. His hold on me tightened, making my nurse race. Closing my eyes, just as I was about to touch his lips, something churned in my stomach. I moved my head away, and then all the content that was stuck in my tummy let themselves out. A word much like a curse reached my ears. But the sharp pain in my head didn't let me focus on anything. Just as I thought I would be pushed away for the disgusting thing I just did, the pair of arms just tightened around me before moving me away from the mess I created. The world around me started to spin. But I did hear the voice that called my name. And it held, concern? A hand wiped my mouth before I was pulled into a warmth. A hard chest. Sandra. The name was the last thing I heard before darkness surrounded me. And then there was nothing. The loud noise of the violin was the first thing I heard as I groaned into my pillow. The horrible sound of it triggered a hammering in my head. That stupid teenager boy next door was practicing his violin again this morning. Even after getting a death threat from me last week, he was here again, disturbing my sleep and others too. Shut the hell up. I yelled out, even knowing he wouldn't hear me. And winced at the same time as my own voice throbbed my head. Cassie? You woke up? Beth? Squinting against the morning light, I peeked at her through my still heavy eyelids. You okay? she asked, approaching my bed. You were sick last night. Told you not to drink that much. But you never listen. Shaking her head, she gave me a glass of water and an Advil. Now, take it. Letting out a yawn, I sat up. What are you doing here? You didn't go home last night. I stopped in my tracks. A pinch formed between my brows. Last night? What happened last night? And then blurred memories that soon turned crystal clear hit my brain, making my eyes turn into saucers. Icy blue eyes, Duncan de Silvano. Whispers of last night echoed in my head. How do you plan to pay me back if I'm not going to take it in cash, Cassandra? A kiss? A gasp slipped through my lips. Shit. I didn't say it to him. Did I? I definitely did. Oh God. Another groan slipped me. My cheeks burned with embarrassment. How could I do that? Especially when that man clearly hurt my ego by ignoring me for months. Is everything all right? You're blushing, commented Beth. A teasing smile tugged at her lips. 
Anything memorable you want to share from last night? I shot her a glare. I'm not blushing. I'm mad. Taking the glass from her, I took the pill. How could I be so stupid? I didn't even want to imagine what he must have thought of me. Well, he looked interested too. Shaking my head, I shut off my inner thoughts. Mad at what? she queried. I saw how he went bulldog on that poor man and then took you somewhere. And then I found you unconscious while he was carrying you to his car. And don't forget the mess you created. I cringed at the recollection. I didn't ever feel that much embarrassed before. Then something clicked in my head. My eyes snapped to her. What did you say? He carried me to his car? An enthusiastic nod. Yes. He even dropped us here. Mason said he would handle us, but of course, who can deny Mr. De Silvano? And before I forget let me tell you, he didn't let you off his arms for a single second and even carried you up in your bedroom before tucking you in. I gaped. H. He did it? Another nod. A slow bright smile lit her face. And then it hit me hard. Duncan de Silvano was in my house, in my own bedroom? He tucked me in? Was I hearing right? What made the king of the city finally notice me? My eyes took a glance around my tiny disorganized bedroom. I shunned the shame before it could hit me. So what if he was a freaking billionaire? Not everyone lived in a castle like him. He was here. My heart whispered. Something fluttered in my chest. Okay, stop it, Cassie. For all you know he did it just out of humanity. The man who destroyed someone's career, depending on his mood had humanity? I still remember Chad's words, clearly from that night years ago. It was so kind of him. The way he took care of you, even when you almost puked on him. I don't know why everyone calls him a ruthless man, but I definitely like him. I rolled my eyes. Maybe because he had links with mafia, dons around the world? Or maybe because people didn't see him with any girl for years, because he was immune to love and affection? All right, I admit it. I did some research on him after that night years ago. Those icy blue eyes just didn't slip my mind. And my secret crush turned into a secret obsession when I came face to face with him at M's sister's wedding. Getting out of my bed, I walked into my kitchen. I needed a coffee. Shouldn't you ask if he had done anything wrong to me? You saw him dragging me somewhere from the dance floor, and then you found me unconscious, for God's sake. And here you are, admiring him. Are you really my best friend? She shrugged, tossing her shoulder-length, dark hair over her shoulder. Well, he is M's family friend and business partner. So no matter what the world says about him, I trust him. Betrayer. Glaring, I almost slammed the pot on the stove. Aren't you getting late for your office? She let out a chuckle. Okay, so you're kicking me out now. Won't you even offer me coffee? You love coffee more than your job? A sigh left her. Shaking her head, she grabbed her purse and jacket before giving me a quick hug. I will check on you later. You will be okay, right? I nodded absent-mindedly. All right. Love ya. And our conversation isn't finished yet. Yelling over her shoulder, she then walked out of the door. A sigh left me. Love you too, I murmured before turning to Romeo, as it wiggled its tail, sitting on the countertop. You saw him last night? A meow. I smiled. I hope you didn't like him and left my team just like Beth. You won't get your favorite food then, understand? You know how he ignored me. Another meow, a loud one this time. Good boy. Petting his head, I turned to my coffee. Beth and M didn't know about my secret crush-hate relationship with Duncan de Silvano. I didn't tell them anything. And what would I say? That the first man who ever could capture my attention in a way that I couldn't move my eyes off him whenever he was close, ignored me like I didn't even exist? Okay, not like that. He did answer my greetings and once agreed to dance with me. But that brute didn't say a word to me. Because he was too busy staring. Though I liked that. 
I pinched the bridge of my nose. I was again obsessing over a man who was clearly out of my reach. When I should think about the money I had to give to those bastards. The blaring of my pulled my eyes off my laptop. Chad, without wasting any second, I picked it up. Hey. It's good that you called. I was about to call you. I'm good, thanks, he said, his tone sarcastic. Since you didn't bother to call or text me in the last two weeks, I took it to me and thought to check if you're alive? I shut off the laptop. After my agency kicked me out of their company due to the case I filed against Todd, I had applied to some other modeling agencies. But no one was ready to go against the mayor's brother even if he proved guilty. That's what I have been doing for an hour, checking the emails filled with rejections. Sorry, I was stuck in some stuff. A sigh resonated through the line. I'm sorry too. I knew about the case and couldn't find any time to catch up with you. I'm glad that you finally put that motherfucker behind the bars. I nodded even if he couldn't see me. Anyways, I called to give you some good news. What news? Consider today is our lucky day. Both of our fates are gonna take a U-turn. Excitement dripped from his tone. Before I could ask him to elaborate, he cut me off. I will message you the location, get here at 7 sharp. But why? I don't understand. I sat straight. A groan. You need a job, right? So everyone knew about my condition? Yes? My tone was low in anticipation. Then don't ask anything and be there on time. Don't be late. The boss doesn't tolerate tardiness. And with that, the line went off. Our fates will take a U-turn? What did he mean by that? Chapter 5 High School Boyfriend Bye, Romeo. Be a good boy. I will be back soon. After checking if the door is locked twice, I took the elevator. I didn't want those debt collectors to come and barge into my apartment in my absence. Even though the time they gave me was still unexpired, I didn't trust them. Just as I was about to pull the door of the car, I felt a presence behind me. With an alert heart, I whirled around. A set of pearly white teeth greeted me. Hey, Cassie. What's up? Aaron. I let out a sigh of relief. No drunk men again, don't sneak up behind me like that next time. He frowned as sunlight shone on his blonde hair. I'm sorry. Did I scare you? I didn't mean that. Whatever. What are you doing here? Last time I checked you didn't even know me. A grimace pinched his boyish features. Uh, I'm so sorry for that statement, Cassie. You know, you were stuck in a scandal with that case, and if I told the paparazzi that I was dating you, it would be bad for my uncle's reputation. As well as mine as I'm going to debut into the movie soon. I'm really embarrassed about that, Cassie, but I had a huge pressure on my shoulders. That's why when the paparazzi asked me questions about us, I denied. I scoffed. He was from our middle school. My first boyfriend, for a week. After our childish fling ended, he suddenly appeared at a party three months ago, as a film star's nephew. I didn't even know his uncle was in movies. After the party, he asked me out and I agreed, only for the sake of our childhood. We went on dates several times before Todd happened. And after that, he suddenly became a stranger who barely knew me. Fucking coward, so why are you here now? I raised a brow. You're not afraid that someone may see you with me? Todd has been proved guilty. Your name is clear now. So there is no issue. I'm sorry again, Cassie. For not supporting you. You know the things we have to do for our career, he said, taking a step forward. Now that everything is good, can you please forgive me? I was never upset with you in the first place. So there is nothing to forgive. At his confused state, I continued. People get upset with people they expect something from, and I didn't expect anything from you. So no worries. I never had any expectations from anyone. Living without anyone's help and support was a part of my life now. Cassie, 
please. Try to understand. I had no choice. We were so good together. Can you please give me another chan? Don't finish that line. At my glare, he went quiet. We just dated for a month. And you're saying we were good together? Remorse flashed across his features. But I really like you. And I don't. I agreed to go on a date with you because of the sake of our friendship, that's all. Now get out, I'm getting late. He suddenly grabbed my hand. His eyes were desperate. Cassandra, please. I missed you. Even though we didn't spend much time together, I couldn't get those amber eyes of yours out of my head. I. Shut your mouth before my fist does, Aaron. I'm getting late. Fuck off. His eyes widened at my outburst. Realizing the seriousness of my tone, he stepped back. Uh, all right. I get it. You're mad at me, and we can't go back to our old selves. But can we at least be friends again? Please, come to my house next week. I'm throwing a party for my debut movie. No. I got into my car and closed the door. Please, Cassie. It will be profitable for you too. There will be a lot of famous faces. You can make a fresh appearance there after the case, you know? It will be good for your career. Now that grabbed my attention. An appearance on the occasion of his upcoming movie? He had a point. It would be good for my image. The image that Todd Samuelson ruined. Please? Just think about it, he pleaded through the car window. I shrug, I will think about it. And if I do, don't think I will be there as your date.